will send your angels to camp around about them, God. And we won't fail to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it's your name we pray these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody come to bless the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. He is great and he is worthy of all.
hand lifted, begin to speak something sweet to the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We bless your name, Father. We worship and adore you. We give you honor, Jesus. We bless your sweet name, God. There is nobody like you. Thank you for being our friend and a keeper and a healer, a lifter of our heads, Jesus. Hallelujah. For that, God, we give you all the praise. And we will love you forever, Jesus, because you first loved us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. 
Lord is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How do I connect to God through my spirit? It is through worship. Lift those hands right now. Come on. No, I mean, forget about everything that is going on, went on. Just lift up those hands, those holy hands, without wrath or doubt. And bless the Lord from the fruit of your lips right now. Come on, bless him. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I worship the Lord in spirit. I praise the Lord in my soul. And my outward appearance is reverence that comes from the spirit of almighty God Lord I love you come on tell him Lord I love you I love you come on come on come on come on let that spirit man Come on. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, I'm going to bless his holy name and let the people of God say, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Feel the anointing in this house. 
How many have been just enjoying the word of God as it relates to uh, spirit, soul, and body? You have a better understanding. We, we, we're going to stick with this, this, this theme. I think it's extremely important that we have a clear understanding. One of the things uh, those that are viewing uh, from far and near, we bless you in the name of the Lord. Um, we know that it takes effort, it takes time, it takes energy for you to decide your spirit man to decide to get the word of God and we thank God for all of you the hundreds the thousands amen that tune in every week to receive something from the Lord whether you're on the west south amen east or north amen we welcome you to this hour of deliverance the Bible is not only a mirror, but it is an x-ray machine. Can I get a amen right there? I think it's extremely sunny, important. And I hope you have a better understanding of even the people that you deal with. You should have a better understanding of, of uh, Mother Miles, why people do what they do. Watch this, and what's behind it. Come on, Ma, come on. Can I assess that right, y'all? For these last few weeks, you've been getting a better understanding. Now listen now, according, f according to I have no, uh, Jocelyn, no of, of other reference to who I am save the word of God. Did y'all get that? The word of God tells me who I am. Come on. I said the word of God tells me who I am. It tells me how I was created. It tells me how the universe was created. It tells me how man was created. And then it tells me uh, the nature of what's in me and why I do what I do and why you do what you do. And so just for our reference scriptures, I'm going to have one of my daughters, uh, Sean, to read uh, James 1 and 22. We're going to start right there. I want you to turn to this James uh, 1 and 22. I uh, just felt, I mean, I just heard this unction and I follow the Spirit of God. I, I pulled out my, my uh, oldest Bible that goes back to uh, 1979 with uh, autographed by my dad and mom. That's, that's the Bible that I took to uh, Morris Cirillo School of Ministry. And I have the giants, amen, of, of God's word, the likes of uh, John Olstein. Y'all might know his son, but I was the attendant to the father. <laughs> uh, Morris Cirillo had a whole lot of personal, intimate times with him. Ern ba Baxter, these, these are just phenomenal. Uh, uh, Ralph Martin, who taught the kingdom of the occults, how the occults get off in detail. We'll be sharing some of that in your future. And so I heard that in the spirit to read from that Bible has nothing magical other than 
what's in the print that will transform your entire life. That Bible that you have will transform everything about you. And I heard the Spirit of God say, Sean Bean. So that's why Sean is here. That's why Sean is reading the Bible. <laughs> so go ahead, Sean. Let the Lord use you. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be doers of the word and not what? Hearers. Not only hearers only. I think this is extremely important. Read the next verse, Sean. Get this, y'all. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Now, a glass or a mirror. The word of God is like a mirror. And it's extremely important that you keep your face in that mirror. Who? Come on, April. Oh, man, I feel the anointing. Keep. Come on, say that. I have to keep my face in that mirror. When I keep my face in that mirror, Nikki, it's like an x-ray machine, Stephanie. It will show all the secret parts about me. Read the next verse before I go to this next scripture. Go to it. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway for, forgetteth what manner of man he was. That means when you don't stay in that mirror, if you don't stay under the x-ray machine and you get out from under it, you're not subject to it. And you say, what, what does the subject mean, under it? Once you remove yourself from the mirror, you go into that, uh, uh, that soul system or that soulish system uh, which is called uh, self-consciousness. Now it's about what I want and it's not about what God wants. That's why it's so extremely important uh, to the praise and worship team, to Elder Tim, to the musicians that play um, I know the difference between entertainment and worship. Worship is always about God. Watch this. Entertainment is always about ourselves. Wasn't they banging? Ooh, wasn't that? who? did you get your groove on? Ain't God, tell me ain't no God in there. <laughs> you just having fun in your flesh. But whenever you worship, come on, you go into the spirit and it's all about him, not them. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for that, y'all. And so it's that mirror and we know now we have no, we're not, we're not blinded. It is an order to this thing. It is the spirit. It is the soul and is the body. And that is how, amen, you should live your life in the spirit. How many know you can really live your life in the spirit? I'm not talking about them folk. That's, that's hookah and Cadillac 24-7. And you can't say nothing to them. They have to pray about what they're going to wear. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, those folk that say the Holy Ghost told me to wear the gold shoes and not the blue shoes. The Holy Ghost told me when to drink water, when, when to get a diet Pepsi or, or a diet uh, mm, Coke. That's not what I'm talking about. But I believe, I do believe, and that was one of the first scriptures that my mom and dad taught me. And I just keep on, I have to keep on going back to it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust. Come on now, what's the first word again? Trust. That's it. Now you can move everything else away. Trust in the Lord. 
with all thine. Now, I'm going to get to this today, or gut. And what? To your selfish, soulish understanding. But in some of your ways, all your ways, what? That's in the spirit. Come on, Rico. That's an I can acknowledge him in the spirit and he will do what? Direct my path. You do not have to ever make a mistake. <laughs> see, 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 you can miss it right there. You really don't. Son, pick this up. You never have to make a, uh, a mistake if you trust in the Lord. Now, how many have made some mistakes before? I don't even have enough extremities uh, <clears throat> I made some terrible mistakes because I did not trust in the Lord come on now if you just make a decision to do that today whew, you way down the road am I right about it Joe? and so remember now Remember now, um, in the spirit, I have God consciousness. Um, in my soul, I have self consciousness. And then in my body, just for rehearsal, I have what? World. Come on, y'all got to come and talk to me. We have what? World consciousness. How am I connected to the world? by my five senses. Come on, you gotta remember this. Amen. So when you see then, what is the main activity? I hope y'all taking notes now. Here I am. Amen. In the spirit, amen. The main activity of your spirit is communion or union with God. The main activity is for you to commune with God. That's part of that grammatical construct of, of commune. It means community and union. Communion, grammatical constructs. Two words come together in one harmonious meaning. Communion. When we take communion, we are coming into communion with God. Come on. Y'all get that? That is the only part of man that has a man direct relationship with God is your spirit. Do y'all understand that? Amen. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 6 and looking at verse uh, 17. you got to follow this. Go ahead, please read. 1 Thessalonians chapter 6 and verse 17. The Bible I'm going to bring a correction. The Bible says, amen, not one's soul or body that has fellowship, amen, directly with God, but it is the spirit. And so, again, the highest activity of man's spirit is worship. They that worship him. Come on, y'all. What? It says must. That's the only way. Worship him. In what? In spirit. In spirit. Ooh, glory. I feel the Holy Ghost. And in truth. So. The soul, again, is self-consciousness. And this is where 
we find the mind, the will, and our emotions wrapped up. Amen. The will says, I want. The mind or the intellect says, I think. And the emotions say, I feel. Mind, intellect, and emotions. And so, when you tie that together, you see then the functions of the body, which is, amen, world consciousness, amen. So with the five senses, you have contact with time and space. There is another reality, amen. We live in a time-space universe. But there is another reality, and that is called eternity. God dwells in eternity. That's why when you see, amen, God showing up, certain things ceased in time. Because when he steps in, it's eternity. Walk with me. Come on. Walk with me. The burning bush, it was burning. <laughs> Come on. Wasn't it burning? But the Bible says it was not consumed. Because when God shows up, he's He's in eternity, so you don't have time to burn when you're in eternity. Shatrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now watch this. In time, they were put in the fiery furnace that was tuned up by seven times hotter. Come on, y'all. Is that the word? Come on, I ain't saying nothing for them. Guards went to check on them and they burned up. Is that the word? <laughs> they were in time. So they had time to burn when they got close to the fame. Uh, they were done. God steps in to something that was seven times harder. And the only thing that burned is what held them. Somebody got the notion something is going on that we don't have an understanding of. They could not burn. They could not be consumed because there was another person in the furnace. And the Bible says, that witness said, and it looks like <laughs> the Son of God. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? So that's why sometimes you go through things, sickness, disease, issues, and then when you get in the spirit, all of a sudden there's no more worry. Because eternity steps into your situation. <laughs> Man, I can. <laughs> Come on, y'all give the Lord a real hand clap. Would you just, just point at somebody and say, don't worry about it, Nana. Don't, don't, don't worry. Just look at somebody. Just say, don't worry about that situation. Uh, tell them that uh, eternity is about to step in. This is powerful. And so you have to understand that man's spirit, amen, should direct man's spirit, the spirit of God in you, 
should direct your soul and your soul should direct uh, your body. Except, I, I submitted to you, one exception is when you speak in tongues. Because the Bible says when you speak in tongues, you don't speak to men. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on, touch yourself. Say, I speak to God himself. And know ye not, you don't even know what to pray for as you ought because the Holy Ghost makes intercession for you according to <laughs> the will of God because the Holy Ghost is the one that searches the heart of God. To know what the will of God is concerning me. Come on. Touch yourself. Say, I'm special in the, in the sight and in, in the heart of God. So this is one of the questions we're going to deal with this morning. How can we operate in the spirit and then not in your soul? Number one. Come on, you got it again. Going to this next dimension now. Number one, by making Jesus head of all things. And by doing that, allow the spirit of God to initiate things in your life. Number one, making Jesus the head of all things. Did I say some things? All things. Watch this. Get this. Who is our example? Jesus, of course. Jesus said, I will do nothing except I see my father do it or he tells me. Is that the word? So then. I take that attitude, well, then Jesus trusted the Father not to do anything. I only do what my Father tells me to do. Then I take that in my own spirit, man, and say, well, I'm not going to do anything unless Jesus is the head of it. Because according to the word of God, Colossians, he is the head of all things. And he, he, according to Hebrews, upholds the world in the power of his hands. That's who I want to roll with. Am I the only one? I said, that's who I want to roll with. That's who I want to follow. Someone that upholds everything. The Bible says all things were created by him and for him. So if I can get the mind of Christ, well, then I can do. <laughs> Come on, y'all. All things do who? That does what? Somebody give the Lord some praise right there. Ooh, glory. Come on, give the Lord some real praise, y'all. Say it, I can do it. I can. I can do it. So if I keep him number one, head of all things. Number two, live by God's word. Matthew 4 and 4. Live by it. Go ahead, Sean. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Stop. Two words. Every word. Seven words. But by what? Every word. That does what, Sean? Proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, I won't do nothing that, that I don't hear him say. I won't do it. So number two, I have to live by God's word because man 
It's very important right here. Watch this. The Bible says put no confidence in the flesh in man. Because man, not, let me see, women, they will disappoint you. Have you ever been disappointed by somebody? Come on, I can see them hands right through here. Now, let me, you ever, somebody ever disappointed you? Well, I know somebody that will never disappoint you. Somebody shout out, never, 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 never. Would y'all say it like y'all really believe it? Come on, Tina, shout it out. Never, 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 never. He'll never disappoint you. And so it says, Sean, what does it say? For every word, what? That proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Say it, say it loud, honey. Say it. That, that proceedeth what? out of the mouth of God. Got it. So, every negative thought, I got to go to the word of God and see if it lines up with that word. And I got to put a word on a word. When that devil says you ain't good enough, you got to go to that word and say, wait a minute. The word says that I am the workman of his hands. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all gotta come on, say it right. Touch yourself right and say, I am the workman of his hands. Come on, touch yourself again. I'm the workmanship of his hand. Come on, touch yourself. Come on, come on. When I'm weak, I'm strong. When I'm poor, I'm rich. I can't do it. I can do it. Say it again. Oh. When I'm sick, I'm the God that healeth thee from all of thy sickness and disease. When I feel I'm under, the Bible says you're above. No, no, y'all missed it. Y'all missed one word. It says above, say it again, I heard it. Only. That means you never beneath. Come on, what does only mean? Come on, say it. I'm above only. And what? When they say I'm the tail. Come on, y'all. Come on, all three of y'all. Quick, 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 quick. Y'all the ball move, man. Point that way, son. When they say, I'm the last. That's not according to God's word. All right, y'all do about face. One, two, three. I'm the head. Thank you. <laughs> you follow me? The word has an answer for every negative thought comes your way. Ooh, glory. Somebody give the Lord some praise. I feel such a strong anointing. You have to substitute every negative thought. My mama don't love me. He loves me with a everlasting love. I'll be a mother to the motherless. 
a father to the, come on y'all, to the fatherless. I'll be whatever you need me to be. Say it. I can be what he says I can be. Come on, let that rest. Say it again. I can be what he says I can be. You don't have no advantage over me. Oh, y'all missed that one. Would you just point at somebody and say, you don't have no advantage over me? Because the Bible says he is a rewarder to them <laughs> that diligently <laughs> seek him. And the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth seeking whose heart is what? Pure towards him. And then he says, I will withhold. <laughs> Y'all better come on. <laughs> Come on, where my word folk at? What does it say? I will withhold what? What good is coming my way right now? Say it, good is coming my way. Come on, y'all ain't saying it right like you believe it. Say good is coming my way right now. Tell them I got goodness and, and loving kindness right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Say it, say it, I got it right now. It ain't coming, I got it right now. Because the Bible says, I have already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness right now, you got it. And that devil will try to make you think that you don't have it. But just shout out to that old slew foot, that old deceiver, shout out and just say, I got it right now. Come on, shout it out again. Say, I got it right now. Now go ahead, tell that devil. By the end of the week, you're going to see I'm, I'm going to have more than what I got right now. Go ahead and say it. Come on, say it. Say, I'm going to have more wisdom. I'm going to have more knowledge. I'm going to have more understanding in the name of Jesus. Woo, glory. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory to God. The word is alive. Am I right about it? Number three. Number one, again, making Jesus head of all things. Number two, live by the word of God. Number three, watch this one. You would never guess it. Cultivate humility. Cultivate, create an atmosphere not to be heady, high-minded, think you better than somebody. Stay low to go high. Else, I'm your example for this one. You operate in pride, God will bring you to your knees. I operate in pride one time in my life. Right before uh, 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 I, I, I found out what being close to hell is. A haughty spirit. All these things lead to destruction, pride. So you have to cultivate. Start it today. Start cultivating a spirit of humility. That, that I ain't no better than nobody. But I'm connected to everything because of him. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Now watch this. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. Cultivate humility. Again, when in doubt, watch this, when in doubt, serve. 
Uh, I, can I say it one more time, Sharon? When in doubt, cultivate humility. When in doubt, start serving. Why? Missionary Beverly White, give and it shall be given. <laughs> Read it. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Oh. Don't do it to be seen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't do it to get brownie points. <laughs> Come on, Ben. But show love one to another. Don't discriminate. Oh, I can't get an amen. Jesus. If somebody don't believe like, like you, clock them, hit them with a baseball back, knock their brains out. No. It says what, Sean? The last part. Read that last part. But ye, by, by love, serve one another. Serve one another. Plant the seed that you care. Watch this one. Um, First Peter, y'all get this one. First Peter chapter five, and looking at verse five and six. First Peter. You're in chapter 5. Go ahead. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, mm -hmm. and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, mm -hmm. therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You got to go low. To go what? Watch this. When you look at that word clothed, you got to do your research. Huh? When it says being clothed, it refers to a slave would always wear an apron. During these times, when that was written, slaves wore an apron to identify themselves as a slave. What, what Peter says is here, you need to be identified with God. How do I do that? By serving. Come on, y'all. That's where you see that word clothes. It says identify yourself as serving. Again, God does not operate in guilt. Come on, let me say that again, come on. God does not identify in guilt. Did y'all hear what I just said? He doesn't make you just feel guilty to do something. Okay, but in the spirit of humility, he wants you to identify with Jesus, the Messiah, because he said, the greatest among you will be what? To some. It says to all. Come on, y'all. The greatest among you will be servants to all. So touch yourself and say, I need to cultivate uh, humility. Now I'm about to blow your mind. I know this is going to mess with some of your theology. And remember, theology uh, is not uh, inspired necessarily by God because you got a lot of theologians that believe a whole lot of different things. Theology rests in one's soul. Theology 
doctrine. It doesn't rest in the spirit, it rests in the soul. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? And so when you look at this, I'm going to say something now. I'm just trying to get you ready for it. Don't ask God. Don't pray to God to make you humble. See why some of y'all laugh and some of y'all say, uh-oh, I ain't going to say nothing. I, I don't want to be in getting trouble. Go to that word. Uh-oh, Mother Miles says she in the spirit. God says, humble yourself. Come on, where my word folk at now? Don't pray to be humble. God ain't going to make you humble. God said, that's a choice you don't have to make to humble yourself. Is that the word? Come on, y'all Y'all talk to me. So I need to make a decision that I need to humble myself. Or find out what it is to get off, off God's carpet. This ain't carpet ministry being laid in the spirit. This is that ministry who the Lord loveth. He chasteneth. He, 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 he will allow some things that will humble you. That you would say, I give up. Humbled. I'm humbled. <laughs> Come on, is that the word? <laughs> Who glory. And then so again, number one, how do I operate in my spirit, not in my soul? Number one, making Jesus head of all things. Number two, live by God's word. Number three, cultivate humility. Let me close right here. I'm about your way. The question now I want to deal with, deal with now is why do I have a body? Why do I have a body? This is going to get exciting. All right, Psalms 139 and looking at verse 13. Go ahead and read. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Mm. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Stop. Don't ever put yourself down. I ain't going to get a whole lot of amens through here. Amen. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Watch this. I'm about to go there. John, you are God's masterpiece. Come on, y'all. Can't say amen. God, God. God made you and you not yourself. You are beautifully and what? Wonderfully made. I told you about two weeks ago, three million parts is just identified with the eye alone. I'll bring up the brain next week. But it is mind-boggling. Go ahead, keep on reading. Marvelous are thy are thy works, and thy that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. Stop. Don't that tie to Jeremiah chapter 1? Before your mama's womb, I knew you. I actually wrote your body parts down in a book. 
touch yourself to say, I am a masterpiece of God. Say it again. Say, it. I'm a masterpiece with God. Say it one more time. I am. Which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. When I didn't have nothing, it speaks of God going to the lowest part, Moses, of me, to my material being, that he fashions all of these things. It is, it is phenomenal that he would allow sperm and egg, millions of sperm, one egg, zygote. Scientists try to understand it, metaphase, prophase, anaphase, and then split apart. You are saved, called, and anointed by God. And the reason why, here it is, he created your body is for him to dwell in. Please write it down. For him to dwell in. The Bible lets us know that God had a day and a time to form you. God said in his word that I want a temple Watch this, to dwell in. Oh, this is great. Not made with hands. Remember, the tabernacle was a shadow of what was to come. But he says that I don't want to dwell in nothing that man made. Somebody give the Lord some praise right there. <laughs> Exodus 29. Go to it. Exodus 29 and verse 45. Y'all got to write these things down. This is why you have a body. Go ahead and read. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and I will be their God. What does it say? I will do what? Dwell. Dwell among them. And I will be their God. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11 and 12. Please. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Do y'all see this? God says, I want a temple. Again, not made with hands. And I'm going to be your God. And you're going to be my people. You are the apple of his eye. Nobody sitting next to you, in front of you, backwards, is better than you. I am spiritual. Special in the heart and in the mind of God. Revelation chapter 21, verse 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 and 3. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from mm. God out of heavens, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, 
and he will dwell with them, Ooh, and they shall be his people, <laughs> and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. Right there. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm God's dwelling place. Come on, say it. I'm God's dwelling place. Who glory. Who glory. Glory to God. Amen. Acts chapter 7 and verse 48. Y'all get all these down. Don't you ever put yourself down again. I don't care if you ate a few cheeseburgers. Don't let that stop you from magnifying God to know that you are in the heart and in the mind of God. Go ahead and read. How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as saith the prophet. Do you see that? I don't dwell in things that, that's made with hands. God said, I want to sup with you, you sup with me, and we come into communion. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Read, please. Go ahead. First Peter chapter two, verses four and five. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word mm -hmm. that ye may grow thereby. Mm -hmm. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto living stone disallowed indeed of men, oh, yeah. but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones this is good. are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Do y'all see this? He said, touch yourself and say, I am a lively stone. What is my job? To offer up what? Praise. Pray. To offer up sacrifices. I am a lively stone. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Oh, this is powerful. I'm a lively. I ain't, ain't nothing dead about me. Say it. Ain't nothing dead about me. Go ahead and read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus besides. I know not whether I baptized any other. Mm -hmm. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words. Come on. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Do you see this? He said that everything about you is alive. It's not dead. You are a lively stone. So why did God want a body? Because he wanted a temple to dwell in. Do you know how special that is for the Holy Spirit to dwell in? The Bible says your body is a temple of who? The Holy Ghost that dwells on the outside, that's on the inside. Now, get this last point and I'm done. You have to understand it was twofold. You see, after he was resurrected from the dead, it was twofold. It was not just onefold. You got to get this in the spirit. What are you, what are you talking about, man of God? The Bible said after he rose from the dead, he breathed. 
the rock. He breathed on them what he breathed on Adam in Genesis. He breathed the life of God back into them. But it was twofold. Seven weeks later, he ascended upon them in the upper room, the outpouring. Y'all got that? The first one is restoration. The second one is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, y'all should have clapped right there. Come on, give the Lord some praise for that. John chapter 7 and verse 37. This is my last, last scripture. John chapter 7 and verse 37 through 39. Here we are. We're going to talk about that heart now. Because the question is then, Pastor, where, where does God dwell then? Where does he dwell in? It's very important. In our bodies, where, specifically where? This is a good question. John chapter 7 and verse 37 through 39. Read, please. In the last day, that great day of the feast, mm. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, uh -huh. as the scripture hath said, come on. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, mm -hmm. which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because the Jesus was not yet glorified. Do y'all see this? When was it fulfilled? After he rose from the dead, breathed on his disciples, the breath, the royal coca dish in their body. Where did that go? Did it just go anywhere? No, it went into the heart. It went into the heart. Another word that is very similar to the heart is, is this word gut. He went into the heart of man. What needs to be redeemed? The heart. Come on, y'all. Of man. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Come on. Nobody but that mirror and the x-ray. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. Am I right about it? So when Jesus came, he came to bring restoration to a heart that was wicked. The Bible says in Genesis, it says that man's mind was on evil, Charlie, continually. Can you imagine a heart just thinking evil 24-7? Y'all, come on. Why did Jesus have to come? To redeem man back to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what? Believeth in what? Shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Stand to your feet, y'all. Thank you, Lord. We are his sheep of his pasture. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. 
and another, they won't follow. I need to be connected to the Spirit of God. And if I'm connected to the Spirit of God, watch this, no weapon. That's what? Shall do what? Prosper. When I'm operating in the Spirit, he said, I won't let no harm come your way. Come on, is that the word, y'all? Come on. Ooh, I feel heaven coming down right now. Come on, lift those hands. Let's begin to worship him. In spirit and in truth. Right before you go into worship, say to yourself, I'm special in the heart and the mind of God. No, no, say it again. Say, I am. Touch yourself. I am fearfully and beautifully made. Lift those hands. Divorce yourself from all thoughts, all negativity right now. Oh, I feel the anointing. Oh, <laughs> glory. All over the temple, all over the temple. Oh, the glory. Of Come on. We the temple. Come on, rest in that. From your rest. By our prayer. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Right now, oh, 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 start worshiping oh, 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 oh,
If you're listening on the sound of my voice, one of the greatest privileges, if not the greatest privileges you have is to get your your heart right with God again. Because there is a possibility that you can be entangled with the yoke of bondage again. If you don't stay in that mirror, you can fall into what we call a soulish state. And that is the spirit of rebellion. That's when you really don't want the things of God again. But I believe through the power of the Holy Spirit that I believe that the Spirit of the Lord does convict men, women of sin. And I believe not just in this live audience, but I, I believe in, the, in our audience through the airwaves that there's somebody right now that, that said, you know what, I heard what you said today and I got to get things right with my God. It is just so simple, according to Romans 10, that if your heart come into agreement with your mouth and confess the Lord Jesus, that he came, that he died, and that he rose again, and that he's coming again, you can be a recipient of an overcoming lifestyle. Who glory. Lift those hands right now, everyone, and just repeat after me. Those over the air, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. God, I do want to be right. I want to receive your salvation, and I want to be whole right now. In Jesus' name. And if you said that, if you meant that, there is rejoicing going on in heaven right now. I know it is because the Bible says so. Come on, somebody. Now give the Lord some praise for Come on and exalt him. of what's going on the inside is not only to bless the Lord but to thank him for what he has done for us bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me I'm gonna bless his holy name can you just give the Lord a thanksgiving praise right now for what Come on, for what he has done. Come on, clap your hands. All ye people, shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Somebody give him one Shabbat before we get out of here. Come on, lift up those voices. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And let the church say, amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Did y'all get the word today? Did y'all get the word today? Why did he need a body? 
why did Jesus need a body? The Bible tells us to fulfill the purpose of God. Then, then why do we need a body? To for God to dwell in. But this body is not the body that is to come. This body is going to be put off, y'all. And y'all are going to receive a new body that does not corrupt, that does not get old, that can't get sick. You don't have to worry about, about nobody talking about you because that spirit is going to be in hell. It's going to be in the lake of fire. Do y'all hear me? So we just thank the Lord for his mighty acts to men. Amen. If you do not have an envelope, we want you to prepare to plant a seed. That's part of the, the giving process to sow a seed. We do have ushers in the aisles if you did not get an envelope. If you did not give an envelope, just lift up your hands if you did not get one. We're here to serve. Looks like everyone. Well, Pat, come on down, Audrey. We got some folk that need an envelope. We want you to plant a seed. Thank the Lord for what he is doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Anybody else? I know, based on your comments, you are really enjoying um, our Bible teaching on Tuesday. Amen. Awesome. And also, our prayer just just something I just truly look forward to, for real. Amen. I got another special guest. Uh, my dear sister Jackie McCullough is going to be on this Wednesday on our Tuesday prayer. Jackie McCullough. Uh, we had uh, Noah Jones and, and Wes Morgan on, I think, last week. Amen. A lot of men and women of God. So we, we're talking about nothing but prayer. That's all we're talking about. And she was just, when? When? I said, ah, next, next week. So we're going to look forward to her being on, talking about prayer on this Wednesday. Amen? Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that you can get free COVID-19 testing in our social service. Amen. The Lord is doing some tremendous things. Amen. We thank God that your steps are ordered by the Lord. Touch yourself. Say, my steps are ordered by the Lord because I delight in his way. Say it, because I delight in his way. Now, I believe, Jocelyn, y'all hear me? Everybody listen. Let me get your attention. I believe that, that this week, because it happened for me this past week, that the Lord is going to cancel some debts in your life. I believe that this week. Since y'all so rich and y'all got everything going on, y'all hold your clap. Now, for the folk that, that don't mind some debt cancellation up in here, I just want to hear y'all. I just want to hear y'all. Now, 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 uh, Jasmine, um, and, and Andrea, y'all listen. Let me just see the hands of, of folk that had COVID-19. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand high. Don't be afraid. I'm about, to, I'm about to hook you up. I'm about to put some money in your pocket. Folk that had COVID-19, <clears throat> there's a fund that's going to pay you because you had the, the disease. Okay, you see there, I told you, I know, I know, it sounds crazy, but 
y'all better, y'all better know if you roll with this church, there's some crazy stuff gonna happen. Uh, call the office tomorrow. Jack, now don't be saying, now you got a cold and I got the disease. Don't, 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 don't start that. But, but they about to put about $400 in your pocket. Watch this. If you've been in the house with somebody that have it, they gonna get them 400 some dollars too, or 300, somewhere around there. I'm telling you, it's crazy. So it is, it's crazy. <laughs> so Jazz and them gonna have the information tomorrow. Now don't be calling your relatives in Alabama now for this house. Y'all hear me, darling? <laughs> Somebody say, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, guys, I'm a, he's going to make me a blessing. I'm going to call all my relatives. And let, let that fun dry up. And then you don't get your name in. And then you're going to be mad. So we're going to get you that. That came through my sister. Amen. Joyce Johnson. She called me and said, Pastor, this is the craziest thing I heard, but they doing it. And, and, and they're releasing these funds. Now, I told you I believe this week is going to be debt cancellation. The second thing I believe this week that's going to happen to you is that, that somebody, some organization, some relative, some friend is going to just plant seed in you this week. I believe that. Now, you say, why you say that? I got to give you a reason why. Because he loves me. That's right. That, he, he loves me. I know I'm loved. I know I'm special in the heart of mine. I know that. Because uh, a director, I ain't going to tell you who the director was, but they called and said, have you been affected um, um, by COVID-19? Uh, and I had to think, because I don't lie, I had to think. I said, all right, in what area are you talking about? And, and he said, well, financially. And I said, well, is he talking to me as an individual? Or, <laughs> or is he talking corporately? And I was like, uh, and then I just didn't say nothing. And he said, well, uh, my boss, amen, told me to get a hold of you that they're going to give uh, the church $25,000. Just 20. That happened this week, y'all. Said we're just going to give you $25,000 because of COVID. I ain't say nothing. Because of COVID-19. <laughs> Who glory to God. So that's why I say what starts at the head got to come to the body. So y'all get ready for a phone call. Y'all get ready for your boss. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, y'all going to receive that or not? Come on, just shout out, I receive, I receive. I receive the favor of God. I receive increase coming my way. In fact, speaking in the atmosphere, I'm going to agree with you. Say, increase cometh, amen, to my house right now. Say it, come on, right now, right now, right now. I'm going to be filled to overflowing. Something crazy is going to happen for me this week because I am the righteousness of God. Now somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. All right, y'all stand up. I love you. Release that seed. Release that seed. Let's go. 
country asked them to fight, they said yes. They fought for our freedom. Now, they're fighting for their own survival. Wartime veterans have paid a terrible price for their patriotism. Many are left homeless and helpless after fighting for our country. These heroes need our help. The Gary L. Miles Veterans Facility was created to help bring these heroes home and give them the comfort and support they deserve. When you make your generous contribution of $14.99, $19.99, $29.99, or your best gift every month, you are helping our veterans have a warm, safe place to sleep with a roof over their heads, enjoying all the comforts of home. Thank you for your generous contribution. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Did you know that there was an easy and secure way to pay your tithes or sow a financial seed into our ministry? Just go to www.igcministries.com. Click the Give tab and select Donate. Enter your desired amount. If you have a PayPal account, select the Donate with PayPal option where you'll be directed to enter your username and password. Check to ensure that all the information on the page is correct and click Donate Now. If you don't have a PayPal account, that's okay. Simply select the Donate with Debit or Credit Card option. You can make any amount a monthly donation by checking the box. Enter your necessary information. Also, if you plan to continue giving electronically, check the Save Information for Next Time box where you will be prompted to create a PayPal account. Once you are done, simply click Donate Now. You will be sent a confirmation email to the email address you provided. We thank you for your donation. God bless.